Data analytics was a hot career last year, the year before, and it's not going anywhere in 2024. So if you have been wanting to become a data analyst, then you have clicked on the right video. Because in this video, I'm going to be sharing data analyst roadmap that you can use to become a data analyst in 2024. There are three ways to become a data analyst. You can earn a degree, you can take boot camps, which is the condensed version of degree program, and third, you can do self-teaching. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on self-teaching and how you can learn different subjects in data analytics to become a data analyst. In my opinion, learning data analytics is not that difficult. For somebody who is just starting out, they probably have no idea where to get started, what to learn. So this video is specifically dedicated to you. So before we talk about the roadmap, let's actually talk about what does a data analyst do. So businesses are collecting a ton of data and they want to make data-driven decisions. And that's exactly when a data analyst comes in. They help the company make data-driven decision using that data. So data analysts in this case would be looking at historical data, understanding performance, where things are going well, where things could be improved, and helping business guide into making a decision that would help them grow in the future. And this is why data analyst's role is specifically important to any company because a data analyst is basically telling you what's happening with your business so you can make data-driven decisions. Data analyst falls into the data science umbrella. There are several roles in the data science umbrella, including data scientists, machine learning, data engineer, AI specialists. But in this video, we'll be focusing on data analyst topic. Before we jump into the roadmap, I want you to do one exercise. I want you to research the role. I want you to figure out what your target data analyst role looks like, what your target company looks like. Let's say your target company is Amazon. In this case, you will go to Amazon career website, look up data analyst role, read the job description, and try to understand what are the skill sets that they're asking for, what are the tools that they're asking for, what is the language that they're asking for, you're gonna take a note and write it down. And we're gonna come back to this. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to LinkedIn and find somebody who is already working as a data analyst at Amazon and you're gonna see what their background is. Did they take any specific courses? Did they take any specific certificates? Basically try to understand what their day-to-day -day work is like and what exactly is their background. And you're gonna make a note of that information as well. Now you have basically created a data set based on your research of the role where you will use that data and work backward from it. For example, let's say your target company prefers that you know how to work with Google Sheets and Tableau. Or in Amazon's case, Amazon loves to use their own specific native AWS products, such as QuickSight is one of the tools that they would be using. So you might see that on the job description as well as somebody who is working there. So by doing this exercise, you actually are basically creating a roadmap for you, which gives you an idea of like, okay, what's your end state looks like? Where do you want to go? And this is actually really, really helpful. I actually do this for all of my work, not just for learning something new, but also like when I'm doing like my project scoping, I try to figure out like what exactly do I want to, what does my ideal outcome looks like? So it's very similar to that. You're doing project management of your data analyst learning roadmap. So let's say you have understood the role, you know what you want to do, what your ideal role looks like. Now we're gonna jump into that roadmap. There are a few things that I'm going to be mentioning. I'm going to be talking about how much statistics and math you need to know, what coding languages you need to know, what tools you need to know. I'm also gonna be covering some soft skills as well as project and hands-on work and finally ending with interview prep. So we're gonna be covering a lot in this video, so start taking notes. So the first thing I wanna talk about is statistics, math, and data analysis fundamentals. For statistics, I would suggest that you start with understanding descriptive and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics is like a summary of your data or a snapshot of what your data looks like. It basically helps you understand main characteristics of your data. Inferential statistics is basically taking it one step further. It's taking the snapshot of the data and making educated decisions. Think of like experimentation, prediction, and things like that. That's where you will be using inferential statistics to understand your data in a more educated way and make predictions from it. This is a visualization that basically explains what is the difference between statistics and inferential statistics. You can learn these topics from anywhere. You can pick any book that talks about these two topics. Just make sure that it's focused on data analysis so that learning can be catered to like your needs. For math, I would say you need basic understanding of arithmetic math and algebra. Although you would likely not be using as much math, it's likely when you have to do some statistics or some machine learning work. The chances of you doing that as a data analyst is low, but it's always good to have some knowledge of math. 
The third thing that I would like you to cover here is some data analysis fundamentals. What does it mean when we say data cleaning, data collection, like understanding what each of those terms mean so you are able to talk in a data analyst language. There are several resources for learning all this statistics, math, and data analysis. There are YouTube channels. I love Khan Academy for learning stats and math. Definitely a great resource for data analysis fundamentals. You can pick up any book. So one of the free resource that I found on learning data analysis fundamentals is this free ebook called Introduction to Data Analytics. This ebook is created by HubSpot, who is also sponsoring this portion of the video. The ebook covers data analysis fundamentals and starts from like very basic, such as data cleaning, data collection, and then jumps into more advanced topics such as bias versus variance, which is one of the topics that you will need to know for inferential statistics. It also talks about what are some use cases for using generative AI when it comes to doing data analysis, which I think is like really cool. There are several other examples that are included for the types of data analysis and data analysis methods that you can use as a data analyst. All in all, this is a super handy ebook to have by your side when learning data analytics. And the best part is that it is free. It's linked in the description below, so feel free to download it. Now, let's say if you have learned the statistics, math, and data analysis fundamentals, then we're gonna jump into tools. For tools, learn Excel. Excel is the bread and butter. The chances are you're gonna be spending a lot of time in Excel or Google Sheet, depending on what your company prefers. So become very comfortable with Excel. Some of the things that you should do in Excel is data cleaning, sorting, creating pivot tables, writing formulas to do descriptive statistics, learn how to do data visualization in Excel, and also learn how to make it pretty because everybody loves pretty reports and pretty Excel files. Excel and Google Sheets can be very similar. So I would suggest to focus on one and then you can easily transition to other now, if you have done your research and you understand that your target company and target role uses a tool like Tableau or something like QuickSight or Looker Studio, then you will kind of like target which tool to learn based off of that. Let's say the role that you looked at was preferred learning Tableau. So let's say the research that you did based on that research, you learned that you need to learn Tableau as a data analyst. So that's where you would kind of like start learning Tableau and figure out what kind of things that you need to do in Tableau, whether that is like creating reports, doing visualizations and so on. By learning this tool, you should be able to make reports and visualizations in these tools because the chances are when you're working as a data analyst, the business stakeholders will come to you and will ask you to build reports in a Tableau or a QuickSight or a Looker Studio type of tool. So learning this tool is definitely going to be helpful. So highly recommend that you pick one and build on it. And then eventually you can transition between the tools, but just picking one and sticking to it just simplifies your learning process. These two things you should definitely be very, very comfortable with. Now, let's say you have learned these tools, the next thing that you should be doing is learn the coding languages. Obviously, the first and primary coding language that I'm going to mention is SQL. And I don't even have to say it, you need to know SQL because the chances are that 90% of your time as a data analyst, you will be using SQL. There might be a 5 to 10% chance where you will be using Python, but if you are starting out in coding, like definitely understand how to write your select statements, how to get data from a database using SQL, how to do filtering, how to join multiple data sets, how to do aggregate analysis, how to use advanced analytics function in SQL. Basically understanding logic is very important as well in addition to like understanding SQL syntax. So definitely do a lot of practice on learning SQL. You can also learn Python, but make sure when you're learning Python, focus on Python for specifically for data analysis because you can easily get lost when it comes to learning Python. I have done a few videos for learning Python data analysis. You can watch one of those to get some ideas. Obviously, you can use generative AI to kind of like help you create a roadmap here and figure out what topics you need to learn. Another cool thing that I would like to share here, like if you're going from SQL to Python, it's also helpful that you use tools such as ChatGPT to help you learn. I have personally asked it to convert coding language. For example, you can give it SQL group by and say, can you convert this to a Python coding snippet? And then you can kind of like learn through that process that how you would do a group by in Python or how you would join two data sets in Python. So just a tip here, if you are going from SQL to Python. Python again is super intuitive and it's easy to learn. So definitely add it to your toolkit for doing data analysis. By now you have basic understanding of stats, math, data analysis, fundamentals. You know which tools to use, you know how to use them, you know the coding languages such as SQL and Python. Now we need to work on your soft skills. By now, whatever I have talked about, it's called hard skills because these are the skills that you need to know in order to do your job. Now, in order to do your job effectively, you actually need to have soft skills. And by soft skills, I primarily mean communication and storytelling 
when you're doing your analysis, when you're doing your work at the end of that analysis, or even at the start of your project, you actually need to understand the problem. And the only way that you can get to the core of the problem, let's say if a product manager comes to you and asks you to do some data analysis, you need to ask them questions back and you need to understand what exactly they're trying to get to because it's sometimes stakeholders ask you questions when they don't exactly know what they want. So by you asking them questions and trying to understand the problem, you are able to get to a better solution. Similarly, at the end of your project, you actually have to present your work, whether that you do it verbally or you do it in a written format or you do it in a presentation format. So get better at communication, get better at writing, get better at storytelling because that would make you effective data analyst. There are several ways to practice that. You can practice it at home with friends, in front of a mirror, with a camera, write blogs, get more hands-on writing experience. All these things like make you a better communicator. <laughs> I don't know if that's a term, but basically you need to have really good soft skills in order to succeed in a data analyst career. After doing all that, you basically have the toolkit for data analyst. Now you need to do hands-on projects and build your portfolio so you can show it on your resume. There are several ways to approach this. One is that you can define your own problems. For example, you can look at your credit card purchases over the last six months and you can try to analyze it. Or for me, I can do like how much I have walked between the different months of the year and I can do analysis on that. I can do cool visualization. So that's one way to kind of like figure out what your project should be. The other is that you can also like go to these websites, a website called Analytics Vidya, which has like specific problems and data set given to you. And you can like build a data analysis project around it. Now, the reason I am saying that there are so many ways that you can do projects because I want you to do it. The only way you can learn is if you do it. And if you don't do it, there are two downsides to it. One, you don't learn. It might seem like that you have learned it, but eventually you'll forget it. And second, it helps you build your portfolio. That's how companies are gonna know that you can do the data analyst work and that's how they're gonna be able to hire you. So you need to do the hands-on work, you need to figure out your projects and you need to kind of like start building your different project portfolio. You can also find a free data set on several sources such as like Kaggle has free data sets. It also sometimes has the problems along with the data set that you can use the data set, download it and solve for that problem. There's also Google data set search that you can use to download free data based on your interest on anything. Well, not anything, but like most of the topics are covered and you can kind of like build your projects around it. One of the other platforms that I mentioned is Analytics Vidya has a lot of problem as well as data set available. If you thought you were done, you're not. I have one more step because I really want you to be ready for real world. And the only way you can be ready for a real world is if you are able to land a job. And the only way you are able to land the job is if you do the interview prep. You have done all the hard work. You have learned the statistics, math, data analysis fundamentals, you have learned the tools, you have learned the coding, you have figured out your communication, you have done hands-on project, you're applying for jobs and you're getting a call. Now you need to pass that interview in order to get that job. So this is where you need to kind of sit down, do your research, figure out what kind of questions your dream job, your target company is asking for that target role that you have and start practicing and do a lot of practice. One of my favorite ways to do is, is I anticipate the question, I write it down on a document and then I practice it. This is more for like behavioral questions. And then I practice with the friend. I do mock interviews with a friend because the problem is that even though it might seem like that you know it, when you are in a pressure setting, talking to somebody else, sometimes you forget. And sometimes you're not able to identify what things that you could be saying better or shouldn't have said. Your friend or the person that you're mock interviewing with is going to help you figure those out. So do a lot of mock interviews, do a lot of interview prep, do a lot of hands-on SQL problems, Python problems, is that what they're asking? One of my favorite platforms, obviously you can use lead code, one of my favorite platform that is more focused on data analysis and data scientists work is start of scratch. I'm going to link them below as well. So make sure that you're prepared for the real world because the goal in doing all of this work is to land a job and enter your career as a data analyst. And only by having good interview prep you will be able to work as a data analyst and be able to get into your target role that we discussed at the start of the video. All right, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, give this video a thumbs up because it will help with the algorithm. And let me know in comments if you have any thoughts or questions and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one, bye.